The amount of energy that this storm, Hurricane Helene, is projecting at a distance from its eyewall is unreal. I thought there was a mistake on the news last night, but when I went to check, it wasn't a mistake. There were tornado warnings in Brevard County, Florida. Now, some of you are probably like, well, hurricanes come and they bring tornadoes. Why is that such a big surprise? Brevard County, Florida is basically the Space Coast. That's on the east side of Florida. Hundreds of, at that time, hundreds of miles away from the center of that storm, which at the time didn't really have that much of a defined eyewall, and there were already tornado warnings. Unreal amount of power. They're going to have to find a different way of measuring the power of hurricanes because they say category two, category three, this storm is so much more powerful than what they're letting on. It is absolutely something for the history books. And other channels have now stepped up and said, yeah, we warned yesterday early that they were not letting on to what was really going to happen with this storm. And now they have finally come out and said, look, this is going to be a once in 500 years storm when it comes to the amount of water. And with Florida already being inundated with water, literally living in a swamp from Tampa all the way to the Space Coast, north to Tallahassee, south to Okeechobee, it's going to be a big deal. Bigger than most. Now, a lot of people look at the news and they go, oh, well, Category the 11 a.m. update still said Category 2, uh, Category 3. It seems like it's going to be average. This storm's different. They need to find a different way of measuring this because the distance at which this is projecting destruction is much, much greater than most storms. I'm way up here on what they call the historic coast, northeast coast, and we're already seeing the effects. They're seeing flooding effects all the way into Georgia. And they're talking about cities in the Carolinas. And this is still well more than 100 miles offshore of Florida. Now, as always, track the tropics, just like it sounds. T-R-A-C-K, T-H-E, T-R-O-P-I-C-S. Excellent source for virtually any amount of information ad-free, mind you, ad-free, that you would possibly want to know. They're even talking about Isaac, which is way, way, way out at north of Bermuda. So you can look up virtually anything here. Now, the big deal today, the big deal today in Florida is getting ready for the water. I know a lot of people are like, well, it's going to bring some wind, Mucky. Yeah, there's not much we can do about that. There's very little that you can do to prepare for the wind. The wind is going to do what the wind is going to do. The water, though, that's going to be the problem. When they talk about 15 to 20 feet of storm surge, I don't think a lot of people can wrap their mind around standing on the beach right now and looking out over the water and going, oh, gosh, it's a very pretty sunset over here on the Sunset Coast. And then imagining in a matter of a day where you're standing being underwater the height of three men. Wait, what? Yeah, take three full-grown men, six feet tall, and have one stand on the other one's shoulders. Now you're up to 12 feet. And then somehow have the third one climb up onto the shoulders of the second one, standing on the shoulders of the first one. And now you're up to 18 feet. That guy is still going to be two feet underwater. That's how much water is getting pushed up into these areas. That's why they're using the term unsurvivable. Because not it's not going to be standing water. It's going to be water being pushed by the power of a hurricane that 100 plus miles off the coast of the west coast of Florida is causing tornado warnings on the east coast of Florida. It's just un real. I was looking at this and, you know, people talk about 10 to 15 miles an hour, 30 to 35 gusts. Eh. When you talk about a wind field of this size and a steady wind with those numbers, 
the amount of destruction is is going to be incredible. That they're still only calling it a Category 2, Category 3. Like I said, that might be technically correct, but the amount of damage is going to be so much worse. So much worse. And they've even said, look, there have been smaller storms that have built up a great deal more energy because they're smaller and have been ranked as Category 4 and Category 5, but they affected such a smaller area that you know a lot of people forgot about them. This one's going to be a big deal. Like I said, we already have people without power. 10,000 plus without power right now. And we're still half a day away from landfall. So just wanted to keep everybody frosty. Keep everybody on their toes. This is nothing for really anyone anywhere in Florida to be ignoring. I mean, unless you're southeast Miami, which is going to probably be one of those places that you don't have to worry much because it's already beyond, I guess what they would call beyond a beam, meaning it's north of you already. But this is going to affect Patriot nurses up in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I watched people talking about how this is going to bring torrential flooding to that area of Tennessee, which is incredible. And BP Earthwatch, one of my favorite channels, noticed something that I thought it was just me. But he actually made a video about it, how this storm is making a much sharper turn to the east than what they had said it was going to. Came off the Yucatan Peninsula heading directly north, and they, you know, the cone, and they're probably, generally speaking correct, that it was going to make landfall up here in what they call the Big Bend area of Florida. And they were maybe worried about it moving west towards Pensacola, Panama City, this region. I, I looked at it and I thought, man, that looks like it's going closer to Tampa. And I'm sure a lot of you are like, yeah, you see how he's he's marking this out here. You know, that this looks like it's making a turn. And if this storm would hit Tampa, St. Pete, with a direct hit, it'll make Katrina look like a thunderstorm. Now, that all having been said, how many of you remember when you could go to Publix here in Florida and you could get something called a hurricane cake. That's right. They would make make little cakes and they would decorate them up in the dark blue with the waves at the bottom. And, you know, they'd paint in white frosting, go away. And then you'd have the, the red and the yellow and the green on the top. And, and it was something that we really enjoyed here in Florida until the crybabies, the whiners, the minority got with the woke crowd that runs Publix and said, why are you making fun of a natural disaster where people are injured? And, la, 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 la. and so they stopped making hurricane cakes. Well, I thought in that same spirit, since Publix has decided that it wants to be woke this way, Publix, Publix, I don't want to see any more crab related products anywhere not in the meat case i don't want to see crab i don't want to see lump crab meat i don't want to see anything florida maquis what what does crab have to do with it well don't you know that the crab is the sign the astrological sign well known globally to be the sign of cancer and how many people have died of cancer Publix. Why are you making light? Why are you doing things to remind people of? So no more. No more crab-related products at Publix, please. Oh, and don't get me started. Don't get me started. Anything race car, especially here near Daytona, anything related to driving fast or that has the number three on it, because we know what happened to Dale Earnhardt, don't we? And we also know that driving with excessive speed can cause problems. It can cause harm, and people have lost their lives, Dale Earnhardt being one of them, turning left and driving fast. So I don't want to see any more items with the number three or anything related to race cars or anything related to driving fast at all 
Or, I don't want to see anything you selling anything that might distract somebody from their driving. Nothing at all. Nothing in the least do I want to see on your shelves. Because it could cause somebody to think. And... Now, this is just hurtful, Publix. This is just hurtful. Crab cakes, clearly. Clearly, you want to see people be sad. You want to see people be sad, Publix. Clearly, you have lost your way. You don't understand the mission. No, 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 no. Your, your mission is not to sell groceries. Your mission is not to sell people what they want. Your mission is to, well, make sure nobody goes into your store and has a feeling about anything one way or the other. It's just unreal. It is just unreal what happens when people get mentally ill and the amount of power that they can have when the internet introduces a one group of mentally ill people to a whole bunch of other mentally ill people and all of a sudden they don't think they're mentally ill anymore and something that Floridians loved and enjoyed and thought was fantastic and a great way to make the best of a hard situation. No, we can't have that. Can't have that at all. So, just thought I would share this. But in all seriousness, in all seriousness, take this seriously. Take this very seriously. If you haven't made the preparations by now, it's getting to the point, depending on where you are, that you might not be able to. So, I know a lot of, I know all the schools are closed. Um, and there's a lot of businesses that are going to be boarding up and saying, you know what? We're going to call it only matter of hours. I'm sure you're going to probably be able to find some gas stations and perhaps a grocery store or two at this point. But, and this of course being at 1223 in the afternoon on the uh, 27th of September, Thursday. So God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.